Hi, my name is Bill Cole from the Glazer Center, and today we're going to have a video on the new Elevation Maker in Athena. This is Athena 2011. Uh, to access the Elevation Maker, we're going to go to Athena, Draw, Facade Elevation. This is going to open the Elevation Facade Elevation tool up, and what we have here is uh, your display screen, and up here in the left-hand corner. If you have previously saved an elevation over an administration, it will actually show you the elevation you're on. So if you have already drawn an elevation, you have saved it, it will then show you what elevation you have to be working on. Now some of the new tools in uh, 2011 with the facade elevation, one of the, uh, the newer tools is uh, the window tool. You can now click, the dialog box is now active, you can click into a an element and if you click element over here on the field setting you can now access the window and door tool and what's new about the window and door tool is in the manager you can actually save the window or door into a library and you can export this library out save it out on your server and reuse these uh, that's one of the new features of uh, 2011 so you don't have to keep building windows and doors now I'm going to start by explaining the tabs at the top. You're going to have the facade tab. Uh, and on the facade tab, it, this controls your outer shell or your outer structure of your facade. Okay, then you go over to the mullion tab. And this controls your vertical spacing of your mullions. Your transoms controls the horizontal spacings of your transoms. Uh, your transoms would be any horizontal mullion fields this controls if you want to put in a knee wall doors and windows combine some bays um, if you want to adjust or edit any anything in here your settings this controls if you want to output a section cut uh, and uh, how you want your dimension and stuff like that and then your administration tab and this gives you the ability to save your elevation out to the library or bring in an elevation that you've already previously saved. Now I'm going to start back at the facade tab and you'll notice now we've got some pop-out dialogs. If you click these you can actually open them and close them um, and what this is supposed to represent is you know we're trying to make it so you can actually do a work through based on the outer part of your frame and the different tasks for doing that. So we're going to start with your raw shell or rough opening. And once again, you can enter a width, and I'll put in 20 feet. You can enter a height, and I'll put in 28 feet. And the other thing that's different uh, about this is you can now put a slanted top or a rake top on the left or the right just by clicking left or right and entering what it is. Okay. Um, same thing with, you know, height left, height right. You can put in 26 feet. <clears throat> now the other thing you can do is if you click arch line, you can actually do a half aligned arch. One of the other new features is if you want to put a uh, an arch in, you just enter in the uh, the rise of the arch, and it'll put an arch in for you. Now, anytime you see this little arrow. In Athena, it means you can actually access the drawing uh, to pick. So if I wanted to, uh, from my height, if I wanted to access the drawing and pick two points, you know, you just click that. Once again, you can pick two points uh, to get that height. I'll bring this back to 20 feet. Okay. Oops. There are 28 feet. Okay. So that's anytime you see a little arrow, uh, you can enter, you can access the. Now, once you get your rough opening set, uh, how you want your elevation to look, uh, once again, I'll do the rise of the arch. You go on to division, and division is you can enter the number of verticals, number of horizontals. So I'll actually put in six verticals, and I'll put in seven horizontals. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you put in here, because you can add more verticals and horizontals later on. But if you know the number, it's always good. Uh, you can do a continuous head. So if you're doing a, an arch, you can make the arch go continuous, and you can actually miter to the left and miter to the right. You can't see it very well, but it actually mitered them corners. Okay. You can also do a continuous sill, 
and you can do an inset. So if you put in six inches, laterally raise your horizontal six inches off the floor. And once again, if you had a uh, a regular uh, sill, you can miter the left, or if you have a, a sill transom, I mean, you can actually miter the left and miter the right. Okay. Now, gap. This is your rough opening. If you put in whatever you want for a rough opening, you can do an all equal, or you can do a different if your sill was 0.5. Once again, you can access the drawing for that point. And if you go to uh, settings and you hit the drop down form, you can actually see your rough opening here, and you can you can actually display that. Okay. Um, now on the wall junction profile, what this allows you to do, and we won't do it on this. But you can actually, if you click top, you can actually put in a head receptor, and you can have the width of the head receptor, which would be two inches, your frame outlet, um, how past the frame, how far, like an eighth inch past the front of the frame you want to stick out, the depth of the overall frame. So if you had a six inch frame, you put in six inches, and the projection of the weather size. Uh, so if you had an eighth inch on the front, eighth inch on the back, um, you can also do a left and right receptor. And you can also do a uh, subcell. So if you if you click cell, you can actually put a subcell in. Okay. Um, and this is all the same. That means anything you put in will be all the same. Okay. Now joint seam is if you have uh, a splice joint, say at 24 foot, you can actually put that splice joint in. And you could put in more than one splice joint. So if you had a three-story building, you could actually keep putting in splice joints. Same thing with your head. If you're running a sub sill, you can put a splice joint in. And your sill, you can put a splice joint in. Now, once again, if you wanted to put a gap here, if you go over to settings and you go to calculation, uh, here on the transom uh, with the T-butt joint and you've got an I-butt joint, which would be intermediate mullions, and then you've got uh, sill and transom. If you put in whatever the thickness of your joint seam is, it'll actually add that there. Okay. Actually, this would be on the I butt joint. This would be what they call an I butt joint. So I'm actually going to put a half inch in here. I'm actually going to gap my uh, verticals. Once again, if you wanted to show your horizontal and vertical sections you want, you just click these. It'll actually show your horizontal and vertical sections as you go. Okay. I don't show mine uh, that way. It actually shows my elevation bigger. Okay, now I'm going to go over to my mullion tab. And this controls my vertical properties and my spacings. And the first thing I'm going to hit is properties. And here I've got intermediate and outer mullions. Uh, so if I click outer mullions, I have all equal. Uh, if I uncheck this, I can control the, the size of my outer mullions and the size of my intermediate mullions if they're different. If I do all equal, they'll all be the same. And here I would put the width of my profile. So if I had a two and a half inch profile, the depth of my profile, and this is important for your section cuts. And whatever your infill inset is, or in other words, your glass bite, and you can change the inset on your verticals and your horizontals differently, and you can change independent verticals, the inset separately. Okay, and if you're gonna do an SSG, you would check this. Now the axis tab, this would actually allow you to uh, space your verticals based off a of running dimension. In other words, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay? Now the other thing it does too is it allows you, if you right click in, any, in this one here, it allows you to lock that specific vertical in that position. So if you had a door that was specified at this location, uh, you could actually right click and lock that doorway. Okay. Now the one thing to remember the minute you lock a vertical, like I locked this one, if I go to even these out, it'll even everything on this side and then e everything on this side. Okay. Now the other option you have is uh, differing. If you check this, you can actually click any vertical and you can change the width of that vertical. So I'll just do it I'll exaggerate it to six inches and you'll notice I got a six inch vertical now. You can actually change the depth and the infill inset or the glass bite on individual verticals. And I'll change